Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly our King and our Lord, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is November the 30th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, today will be our last video in the book of Hebrews, and in the latter part of chapter 12, the writer is simply reminding us that as the people of old feared and quaked from the presence of God, now we have Jesus who is filled with tenderness, grace, mercy, and truth. And as we were told in Hebrews chapter 4, and I believe it was verse 16, because of Jesus, we can now come boldly unto the throne of grace. We don't have to fear as the people before the mount in the times of Moses feared God, but we receive an open invitation to experience the grace of Jesus, the tenderness of Jesus, the gentleness of Jesus. And we can know that we boldly enter into his presence, accepting and realizing that he is forever gracious, faithful, and willing to forgive us, to aid us in our journey, to help us, to guide us, to strengthen us, and this is why all the angels in heaven are rejoicing and celebrating and full of festivity because of what Jesus has done for man. Now, moving into chapter 13, it's as if the writer is simply realizing that he is coming to a close. And he has spent much time in dealing with very specific areas of the Christian life but he wants to make sure that he doesn't leave the letter undone. So it's filled with tidbits of advice and truth that follow no contextual format. So in other words, we can't read the first three verses in order to understand the fourth verse. Because chapter 13 is kind of laid out like the entire book of Proverbs. It's just tidbits, nuggets of truth and wisdom. And so as we begin chapter 13, I would like to read today out of the Message Bible, which begins by saying, stay on good terms with each other. Now remember, again, it's almost as if the writer's saying, I think I've told you everything, but let me just go back over the key points of the Christian journey. Stay on good terms with each other, held together by love. Be ready with a meal or a bed when it's needed. Why some have extended hospitality to angels without even knowing it. Regard prisoners as if you were in prison with them. Look on victims of abuse as what happened to them had happened to you. Honor marriage. Guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband. God draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have. Since God has assured us, I'll never let you down. I'll never walk off and leave you. Appreciate your pastoral leaders who gave you the word of God. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you as well as their truthfulness. There should be a consistency that runs through us all. For Jesus doesn't change. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, he's always totally himself. Don't be lured away from him by the latest speculations about him. The grace of Christ is the only good ground for life. Products named after Christ don't seem to do much for those who buy them. The altar from which God gives us the gift of himself is not for exploitation by insiders who grab and loot. In the old system, the animals are killed and the bodies disposed of outside the camp. The blood is then brought inside to the altar as a sacrifice for sin. Well, it's the same with Jesus. He was crucified outside the city gates. 
That is where he poured out the sacrificial blood that was brought to God's altar to cleanse his people. So let's go outside where Jesus is, where the action is, not trying to be privileged insiders, but taking our share in the abuse of Jesus. This insider world is not our home. We have our eyes peeled for the city about to come. Let's take our place outside with Jesus, no longer pouring out the sacrificial blood of animals, but pouring out sacrificial praises from our lips to God in Jesus' name. Make sure that you do not take things for granted and go slack in working for the common good. Share what you have with others. God takes particular pleasure in acts of worship a different kind of sacrifice that take place in kitchen and workplace and out on the streets. Be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your lives, and they work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not its drudgery. Why would you want to make things harder for them? And please pray for us. We have no doubts about what we're doing or why, but it's hard going and we need your prayers. All we care about is living well before God. Pray that we may be together soon. Now may God who puts all things together, makes all things whole, who made a lasting mark through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice of blood that sealed the eternal covenant, who led Jesus, our great shepherd, up and alive from the dead. May he now put you together, provide you with everything you need to please him. May he make us into what gives him most pleasure by means of the sacrifice of Jesus, our Messiah. Now all glory to Jesus forever and always. Oh yes, yes, yes. Friends, Please take what I've written most seriously. I've kept this as brief as possible. I haven't piled on a lot of extras. You'll be glad to know that Timothy has been let out of prison. If he leaves soon, I'll come with him and get to see you myself. Say hello to your pastoral leaders and all the congregations. Everyone here in Italy wants to be remembered to you. Grace be with you, everyone. Now, friends, what we have just read is the eternal word of God, put as simply as it possibly could be put, so that all may understand it. And so for that reason, I'm not going to add anything to it. I think it's very clear in what it says. Two things I would like to point out as we close today. First, the reason that I believe that this letter is written by Paul is because there are so many quotes within the book of Hebrews that we also see in the Pauline epistles, in the book of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, even from Corinthians and Romans. There are so many things quoted almost verbatim that we read in those other letters. Second, as Paul closes his letter, he says, Know that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, and if he will come shortly, I will see you. Now, if you're familiar with the letters of Paul that I've just mentioned, you know that Paul constantly makes reference to Timothy, and he's constantly referring to the fact that he wants to come and see those whom he is writing to. And last of all, in verse 25, the writer of Hebrews says, grace be with you all. Amen. Paul is the only writer in the New Testament that ends his letter by saying, grace be with you all. Go and look for yourself. You'll not find it in James. You'll not find it in the book of 1st, 2nd, or 3rd John. You'll not find it in Jude. And you'll not find it in the books of 1st and 2nd Peter. It was only Paul who ended his letter by saying, Grace be with you all. Now, the last thing that I would like to do before we close our study on the book of Hebrews is to go back to the introduction that is given us in the Message Bible so that we can recap everything that we have studied. 
It says, it seems odd to have to say so, but too much religion is a bad thing. We can't get too much of God. We can't get too much faith and obedience. We can't get too much love and worship. But religion, the well-intentioned efforts we make to get it all together for God, can very well get in the way of what God is doing for us. The main and central action is everywhere and always what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will continue to do for us. Jesus is the revelation of that action. Our main and central task is to live in responsive obedience to God's action revealed in the person of Jesus. Our part in the action is the act of faith. But more often than not, we become impatiently self-important along the way, and we decide to improve matters with our two cents worth. We add on, we supplement, we embellish. But instead of improving on the purity and simplicity of Jesus, we dilute the purity, we clutter the simplicity, we become fussily religious or anxiously religious. We... Put simply, get in the way. That's when it's time to read and pray our way through the letter to the Hebrews again, which was written for those Christians who have become too religious, for those Christians who Jesus is not enough, but it's always Jesus and. In the letter, it is Jesus and angels, or Jesus and Moses, or Jesus and priesthood. In our time, it is more likely to be Jesus in politics, or Jesus in education, or even Jesus and Buddha. This letter deletes the hyphens, the add-ons. The focus becomes clear and sharp again. God's actions in Jesus alone. And we are free once more for the act of faith. The one human action in which we do not get in the way, but instead we get on the way. Well, friends, I trust that this study has been a blessing to you, has enlightened your eyes to some things that you may not have known previously before we began this study. And I pray because of it, you have become a better, more committed, more dedicated follower of the Lord Jesus who, if we are to remind ourselves, is the very purpose and reason we begin this journey. It's not heaven. It's not the streets of gold. It's not the crown of life. It's not all the rewards that he will so graciously bestow upon us. It's not even eternal life. It's simply to see Jesus, the one who died for you and for me. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. And I'll see you on the next video.